Hi everyone, it's Eugene Lee Show and welcome to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry, laser scanning and all kinds of 3D technologies. Sometimes we even get to interview some pretty cool people. Today what I've done is I've got a small crime scene here and what I'm going to do is scan this and I'm going to scan it with the Artec EVA, that's this right here. And the reason I'm doing this is twofold and one is that there are two features that I want to try and cover. And one of those features happens to be a combination of the scanning with photographs. So basically photogrammetry textures transferred to a model, which I think is pretty good. And it's interesting to see how you can fuse two technologies in one. The second thing that I want to try is the HD mode. And this is kind of interesting because there are manufacturers now where, you know, after a product gets kind of old, this is an older instrument. I don't know, it's getting close to 10 years, maybe seven, eight years. Um, you know, it's sort of the end of the life. But what they've done is they've implemented some artificial intelligence. And with this artificial intelligence, you can take this same instrument and pick up some additional details. So that's pretty good. That's a great option. So what I'm going to do is just set up here. You can see I've got this, uh, I've got a shoe here with a little ruler and a little uh, uh, cone here. And then I've got another knife with a little bit of blood. And then there I've just got a little blood stain that's on the tile. And so what I want to do is photograph this after I scan it and then combine the photo textures with the geometry that I pick up with the scanner. So I'm not creating a photogrammetry model, but I'm borrowing from those images. And it actually does a kind of sparse reconstruction where it matches the camera position to the geometry that's here. And then it just transfers the, uh, the images over. Now, normally if you had to do that manually, it'd be a really tedious process. Um, you gotta use, you know, 3D Studio Max, ZBrush, Maya. There's a bunch of different things you have to do in between, repairing geometry, all kinds of different things. So this way, um, you can transfer sort of the, a different look. So for example, if I use my iPhone or I use a digital camera, digital SLR camera, I can take those better images and resolve or get better textures with higher detail, uh, at least better than the camera that's in here. Now, the other thing is uh, things like this shoe here. Uh, it's worn, it's got like some small little details and stuff like that. So I want to see how well the EVA can recover this. And we're going to look at it just in the regular H uh, or the regular mode and uh, standard mode, let's call it, and the HD mode. And the HD mode should be able to pick up some of these smaller details. So I'm just going to get my camera, do a couple of little things to get set up. And as soon as that's done, we're going to come back and we're going to start scanning. Okay, let's get this going here. I've got Arctic Studio here and I'm just gonna go into preview mode just by clicking on the top button there. And I'm just gonna do a trial run here. It gives you a preview. I've already adjusted the texture brightness here. It's an option that you can uh, adjust on the, um, in the software there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm also looking at the brightness of the texture. Let me see how far I can get. Now you will see that I'm tethered with cables and that's just the way that the EVA works not much you can do about it. So I might do a test here and just see how well this does. And you can see the 33 there. If I get to a certain point, if actually, if you look at the histogram that's on the screen, when I get really close, or if I take a surface like this, you'll see that most of the data falls at the bottom of that histogram. And we want to be right about here. That's sort of the sweet spot for scanning. Now for HD mode, I may want to get a little bit closer and see what happens there. But if I get too far, then I don't pick up any data. And if I get too close, then I clip all the data as well. So I have to be within the depth of field of the scanner. So we're just gonna give this a shot here and see what this does. So let me go ahead and start scanning. Looks like I can get a little bit closer. I haven't think something like this. Yeah, let's give it a go. Okay, so now I'm scanning and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the wall. I'm just gonna do some overlap here. All right, make sure I pick up that area. Now there are some areas that are gonna be a little bit difficult for me to pick up simply because, well, they're hidden behind. So I'm gonna to have to like maybe go up a bit, see if I can get behind. 
Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Maybe over here a little bit, get behind. Let's see if I can get the front face of the numbers here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing here. All right. I've got the scale, it looks like, and I'm going to go across the back. Actually, it lost tracking there, so let me go back. Okay. So I'm going to have to do something there because it lost tracking. There's not a lot of good features up on the back wall, so I'm not surprised it did that. Let me stop that one. Yeah, so if you see here, you know, it lost tracking. Uh, it's not looking really good. Probably not a good attempt here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do another scan and see if I can do this all in one go. I'm just going to shut that off. Let me try again. Let's see what it does here when it gives me the preview. Okay, I'll take it a little bit slower this time and I'm going to aim for the front here. All right, I'm going to try a better approach where I just kind of go across like this. Okay, there should be enough geometry and texture. I'm going to move in a bit, come across, make sure I've got a bit of overlap there. That looks pretty good. I've got the shoe, getting those details. I'm going to go forward a little bit. I'm going to come back. Now I can see there's some areas that I didn't get. Okay, now I'm getting into the corner. I'm going to just go straight down. See if I can get the back of this one target here. Yeah, filled some of that in. That's pretty good. And also the shoe. Okay, let's go like that. That's pretty good. I got to get the back here of this uh, pylon, or this little cone. And just the shoe I want to focus on because I'm sort of interested in that. Okay, I think I'm going to live with that. Everything looks like it's more or less together. So let me stop that. Let's have a look and see what this looks like. Okay, so you can see that there's no slipped uh, frames or anything like that. So this might be a good one to start with. Now, just for good measure, I may do one more. Let me just do one more, just for the heck of it, right? And maybe I'll start this way. I think I'll start over back this way and then I'll move my way back. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way so I can see the monitor and let's see what I get here this way. So let's go ahead. That's a preview. And then if I click the top button one more time, then I'll start getting into scanning mode. So let me make sure I'm close. All right, let's see what this looks like. So like that, looks pretty good. I'm gonna overlap. That looks pretty good. You can see I'm just sort of painting here back and forth, making sure that I cover all the areas like that. Okay, now I can see that I have some gaps where there are some of the um, the numbered markers here and that's because they're a little bit reflective and whenever you have items that have a high contrast it can cause a little bit of difficulty. So what I need to do here is I'm going to get a little bit further back and I'm going to come over the back of this one, make sure I get the back there, not too bad. The side here is a little bit of a gap, get a little bit closer. See, as soon as I go perpendicular to the number, I pick up more data, and that's important. So I'm gonna get the shoe, and let me just check the marker back here to see if I can get a little bit more data, and that's about as much as I'm gonna do, I think. And that's it, and stop here. Okay, let's see if I slipped on that one. Let me zoom out. I've got two of them open here. So that one's not bad either. You can see I got enough, I got enough space there. I've got enough of the marker and the blood stain. So we're gonna leave it at that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a camera or I might just get my phone and then take some photos of the same thing. Now it's really important that you don't move anything in between here. So everything's stationary, I'm gonna take the photos. If I move something now or something changes in between when I'm scanning and when I take the photographs, it's not gonna register properly. So the photos won't be uh, properly uh, placed on the geometry. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a digital camera here. This is a, a Nikon D7100 and I've got an 18 millimeter lens. So it's important that when we take the photographs, we don't move the focal range or the zoom. Basically set it 
and forget it. Okay, now I can shoot in manual, I could shoot with a tripod. For this example, I just wanna show the transfer of the photo textures over, so I'm not gonna be overly picky. But if I was in a really difficult situation, definitely use a tripod, manual settings, really uh, get the best possible photographs that you can, and that'll help. Now I could also use just a phone, you know, like the new phones now have great cameras, uh, really good color, and that sort of thing, so that's not a problem too. And so, uh, you know, the, the scanner itself actually gets some pretty good textures, but you can definitely see an improvement. So let's give this a go. And I'm gonna take a number of overlapping photographs starting uh, kind of like a little bit wide and then getting in a little bit tighter. Now I can see already that uh, there's some shadows here from these lights. So um, I'm gonna have to just deal with that. I'm, I could try to you know, sort of take photos from different angles, but if I don't get the right angles then I'm gonna have some problems. So let me just do the best I can right now. And I'm gonna just start like this from a, some wider shots and see what we get here. So I'm gonna take one there. take just a few extra photos here I'll continue and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and process this on the computer and the rest of this will all show up on screen here and uh, I'll let you see how we get the photo textures and also what the differences are between the standard and the HD mode. Okay, so I am back at my desk here and you can see I've collected uh, evidence one, evidence two, and evidence three. And these are in groups. So the uh, layered ones up here are like the HD scans. This is the regular scan layered, uh, excuse me, HD, regular, HD, and regular. So I have everything that I wanted, but when I go through them, if I check the first one that we did, let me shut off the last one. Uh, this one here, you can see it slipped and stuff like that. Now, I could probably fix some of this if I just do some registration and stuff like that. But hey, I went back, did it again. It was pretty quick to do that. So this one looks pretty good. Number two is not too bad. You can see there are some gaps here and such. Um, and then I've got the third one here, which also has a few gaps um, like over there and such. So I, I'm not going to make this too big of a deal. I could actually take both of these, align them together, and then, you know, sort of do all that, um, and sort of fill as many gaps as possible. Maybe I will do that. Maybe I can do some alignment here. Let me just get through the, uh, the important part. If there's some gaps and such, so be it. Uh, I'll have to deal with it. Okay, so the first thing is I can erase some things, maybe parts of the wall, maybe parts of here. Maybe I'll limit what I am working on here just to kind of clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to go into the editor and I can use different tools here in order to erase things. So I think what I'm going to do here is maybe use the eraser and uh, I could use rectangular selection if I'm making a straight cut across here like this let's try the rectangular selection if i go oops that's not what i wanted i forgot to press the control key otherwise you rotate so the shortcut is just like that uh not exactly how i want but let me hold down the control key and you see i have a rectangular selection it does that i can just hit delete and that's done and then looking at it from the top down if i get it to how i want something like this okay not exactly okay it's getting there it's getting there you can see it's a little bit on an angle. And if I'm going to do a rectangular selection, I want to do something like this. So I'll just keep this piece here, let's say. And I want to invert it. Okay, and erase. There we go. Okay, so after editing this a little bit, I think what I'm going to do is just make a comparison, run the exact same processing, like the uh, fusion and the simplification on both of the uh, HD 
which is this one here, and then the standard scan. And then what we'll do is we'll compare them in the end. And so I just have to make sure that I pick the right settings that I don't simplify it too much because then it's, they're both going to look kind of similar. So I have to leave enough detail in there that I can sort of distinguish between the two. So let's just go ahead and do that. So right now on this scan right here, uh, this is the standard scan. What I'm going to do is just have a look at the wireframe and I just like to go in there. So you can see there's a bunch of overlapping stuff here. These, all these individual frames. So I need to be able to fuse these. And the other thing that I need to do, if I go to the HD scans, let me bring those up here. Uh, where are they here? Oh, I have to reconstruct them here. So they're there, but I have to reconstruct them. So um, I'm going to start with, well, maybe I can bump it up just, well, I don't want to go to 36 times. That's a little bit high. So I'm going to go with one a quarter nine and I'll start here. So let me go ahead and do the reconstruction here of the HD scans. And I already have this here. Uh, together and I've done the global registration. So once I reconstruct the HD scans, I'll do the global registration and then we'll be at an equal place between these two scans. So let me go ahead, click that on. Let me go down here and I'm just going to go ahead and apply. So let's wait and see what happens. And once that's done, I'm going to come back and then we're going to apply. I think we're going to do a fast fusion on both. And then we'll do a fast mesh simplification on both. It's only because I just don't want to wait a really, really long time. And uh, I'll pause here and be back right away. Okay, so I've got the uh, scan completed. So it's built it from the HD scan. So now I need to run a global registration. And when I do the global registration, like I said, we'll be on equal footing. So this evidence three, which is the standard scan, and this one here, which will have the global registration, will be sort of at the same point. So let me go ahead on HD three here and hit apply. And I'll wait for this to finish. And then we'll come back. And then we're going to start on the fast fusion. Okay, great. So now we're done here. We've got this one. If I switch back, we've got the standard scan. So let's go ahead and let's do a fast fusion of the evidence three. So that's the standard scan fast fusion. We're going to leave uh, 0 0.5 and that might simplify it a little bit, but hopefully not too much. But if we do the same thing, uh, hopefully we'll be able to notice a difference. So let's go ahead and just do the fusion here and then we'll be right back. Okay, so the fast fusion uh, did exactly what it said. Uh, it's come together. And so this is from the standard scan. Okay, the standard scan. So that's this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and just fast fusion. I'm just going to put SD for standard just so I can remember that. Okay, I don't want to get confused between the two. So let's do the same thing now with the HD evidence three here. And you see this one I haven't cropped up here, whatever, but that's fine. Um, it, it, I'll be able to tell which one's uh, which here. So I'm just going to go fast fusion, make sure the settings are the same, 0 0.5, whatever. That's cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and go apply. So the fast fusion is done here. And I'm going to rename this just so I don't get confused between the two. And I'm going to call this HD and hit rename. Okay, let me have a look here. So actually, that looks way better. If you look at the fast fusion here, and then you look at the fast fusion here from the standard definition, you'll notice that, well, there's a lot more artifacts, but also if you look at the level of detail here, and then we switch this one on, this one looks much cleaner and much better detail. So it looks right off the bat, the HD giving a significant benefit, a little bit more crisp detail and much smoother and a lot less artifacts, a lot of less noise and stuff like that. And, and again, this is just sort of uh, equal footing here because we're doing the same settings on the default scans. So it's possible that on the HD scan reconstruction, we can go back and re you know, do it again with some higher levels of detail and such like that. And I may do that. We'll see what it looks like maybe at the end, but that might take a bit more time. So I'm just going to be careful and be aware of the amount of time. So anyway, right off the bat, we look at the standard definition, fast fusion, and we look at the HD, then that looks much better on the, the HD. So that's a, that's a great improvement. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify each of these. So I'm going to start with the standard definition and I'm going to go to fast mesh simplification and I'm going to have a target polygon count of 2 million. I just want that so I don't minimize or make it too simple. So that should be plenty of detail. So let me give that a go and let's see what we've got. Okay, so the standard definition uh, scan has been 
uh, simplified and you can see here that we have different size polygons and places where we have a bit more detail they're a little bit finer so let me just see what this looks like without the wireframe just go to the mesh so it's simplified quite a bit okay still a little bit of noise on the edges and some artifacts there so not sure what happened there but let's do the same thing to the fast fusion here and let me shut that one off and using the exact same settings 2 million for the fast mesh simplification hit apply and then we'll see what this one looks like and compare the two okay so you can see with the uh, mesh simplification we've kind of softened the mesh here a little bit so it might be that that's not a fair comparison and sticking with the originals you could still see the difference so I think that I've made the point there now one thing I'm gonna try one last thing I'm gonna try is I want to go back to the original HD data what I'm gonna need to do is click on evidence 3 so this is the HD data set I'll go down here and just for the heck of it I'm I'm got to be careful here I may want to crank this up so I think I'm gonna go up to 36 and on the frame frequency I'll maybe go to one half okay actually I decided that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the data density up to 36 times and leave the frame frequency where it is so I'm just gonna change one thing now and I'm gonna click on apply okay so let this crunch let it do its do its thing and then after what we might do is a fast fusion like we did before and then see what happens because the beauty here is that you've got this HD data sitting there but you can mess with it so you can tweak it uh, process it at a higher rate or a lower rate or a lower density so I'm gonna press pause here and come back and let's see what we get okay so this is now come back I'm going to rename this right away so I don't get mixed up here and this is actually at 36 X so now I know which one that is now if I go in here yeah let me just turn on the wireframe and oh wow yeah you can definitely see that these little polygons are absolutely tiny so let me back out here and what we're gonna do is do the global registration we'll need to do that so let me click apply then we'll do the fast fusion and then we'll make the comparison and see if we actually get a bit more detail out of uh, cranking that up a bit so let's do global registration let that go and then I'll be right back Global registration is done. So now what we're going to do is move over to Fast Fusion. You see that we've got there a little 0 0.5. Now this number you can change. You can change this down sometimes. So I'm going to try 0 0.3. That might be pushing it on this one, but I'm just going to try it and see if I get greater details if I turn this down. And again, it's just showing you that you have the ability to uh, change things around and and you know you got some options here you have some recourse once you capture the HD scans so let's go apply and let's see what we get okay so I've obviously underestimated the amount of time it's gonna take to process this because if you look at the fast fusion I've been sitting here for quite some time now and it's uh, hardly progressing so in the interest of keeping the video moving forward here and me not having to wait for a couple of hours I'm gonna stop this I'm gonna proceed with the photo texturing part but I'm gonna come back to this again and if I need to let it sit overnight or just let the computer cook for a while then I can do that later on but right now it's kinda of holding me up so I'm gonna hit cancel and I'll wait till this stops and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna proceed with the other parts of the video okay but to summarize what we have at the moment uh, if I turn this on this is my uh, let me go back to solid here this is my HD mesh simplification or fast uh, simplification and that's what it looks like and then if you go back to the standard definition you can see it just doesn't look quite the same there's a little bit more noise here or something um, so not quite the same and we process those with the same setting so it looks like HD is giving you a little bit better result hang on because at the very end of the video and when I get a bit more time I'm going to process this HD one here with the fast fusion and we're going to take a look at that one okay for now though what I'm gonna need to do is actually um, I just need any scan that I can photo texture or I can try a couple of things so what I'm gonna do is I'll use this fast fusion and let's, let me look at the results yeah it's not too bad that's not too bad I mean it's it's dense and there's a lot there but that's okay I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens with this so what I will do and I'll look at this in its totality here is uh, I'm gonna process this one you know what I might even simplify it again uh, because for this one I don't need 
Uh, I'm not really interested in the small details that are on the shoe. So um, I may do the mesh simplification based on shape deviation. That will help me sort of get a, a slightly better result. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. This is the copy. Okay, so I'm going to use the mesh simplification on this one, not on that one. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, mesh simplification. I'm going to look at the numbers. That's good. And I'm going to go apply. And that'll help to optimize some of these larger areas by keeping some of the smaller details. I'll let that go for a little bit. You can see it's uh, moving a little bit, which is great. And that's because I've already done the um, fast simplification. But I'm going to come back when this is done. And then we're going to proceed with the texturing. Okay, so you can see it really simplified it now, so we don't have a lot of details, but that's okay. What we want to do is actually go ahead and do the photo texturing. So if we want to look at the mesh here, I can go to this wireframe. You see some big, big jumps it's made here, okay? But that's okay. It's going to speed up the photo texturing. I'm fine with that. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to jump right over to texture, click on that, and this is the scan that we're going to be working on. It's the simplified scan here, and then we have to say or figure out which of the uh, sources we're going to be using for texture. And so we're going to be using number three or evidence three. Those That's the original scan that took the photograph. So that's really what should be used here. And I am just going to keep the export option here, not the preview. I'm going to choose 4096 by 4096. And I am going to click apply. Okay, and then we're going to see what this looks like. And remember, I'm working on a copy here uh, of the HD. So after I'm going to work on this one here where it says fast fusion, and I'm going to do the photo texturing part. But this is just the normal process. This is what you would normally do when you are texturing inside of Artex Studio. Okay, that's now done. And you can see that we have color back here, and where we have these blood stains and such, right? Um, it's looking a little bit washed out, but, um, and I can see here where it's like bright. There could be some flash, uh, some stuff going on from the flash, uh, from the, uh, the scanner itself. Now there's some things we can do here, right? It gives us some adjustments, saturation, you know, on color, hue, contrast. We can get a little bit more contrast there if we want. And then there's even like some, some gamma correction, but you know, it's not, too bad, but you can see it's a little washed out. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was kind of close. There's a flash there. It is what it is. So uh, on the edges here, it's filled in some things. So that's not going to be an accurate representation of the color. But uh, this part here, okay, not too bad. So let's apply this right now. There's some tweaks and stuff that we can make, but that's what we had with just the scan uh, photos. Now what we want to do though is we want to run the photo texturing and so for that what we need to do is go back up to the top and we want to go into import and we're going to need import photos. Now I've got this set up already so I've got this already here for Artec photos Nikon D7100 and I'm just going to select them all and then go open. Okay so they are just progressing here they're opening pretty quick. And once that's done, then we're going to go back and we are going to get those aligned. Now I'm not sure what I'm going to get here. So, okay, that's in, it's got the photos in. So now you'll see that I have a, uh, an object here that's called photos that contains all the photographs. Now, um, actually, you know what I can do? Let me back out of this for a second and I'm going to make a copy of this one right here, just so we're comparing the exact same thing. I'm going to duplicate this. And so this is the copy. And on this one here, the copy of copy, that's not confusing, right here, this copy of copy, I'm going to use the photos on there. So copy of the copy and then photos. So I've got these selected here and I'm going to do the same thing now. But first things first, I need to align these photos. So that's not ready to go yet. So I think I'm jumping ahead of where I need to be. So what I need to do is just select the photos here and basically up in the registration, if I come down here, I have this right now. What I'm going to do is select all of my HD scans, the uh, standard scan. I've got the photos and I believe I have to also select, well, I can, I think I can select this one right here, which is the copy, which is the one that it will align to or whatever. Um, I think I could probably even align it to the, the HD one. And then 
apply it here afterwards. So let me start with this here. And here I've got the photo registration. So uh, I'm just going to use the defaults and it's recognized that the, uh, well, actually, I don't think it has actually, it's, it hasn't uh, figured out what the, uh, this should be an 18 millimeter lens. So for some reason that's incorrect and I'm not sure why. So let me click on that. And well, let me hit apply and let me see what happens here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it says that the total photo count here is 64, maximum air is 3.9, and failed photos are zero. So that's a good sign. That means that everything has come together, and I should be in a pretty good situation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut off everything, and I'm only going to leave on the items here. So this is the one, this is the copy. So I want to retexture this one with the photos. So now I can go to the textures and I can go to the copy. That's what I want to handle here. And I'm going to use photos and now I can run this here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go apply and let this cook. And once it's done, we'll come back and we'll have a look and see if there is a difference in the photo textures. Okay. So now we've got the photos uh, applied here and if you have a look you can see a big difference in the textures okay so if I go down to the shoe here the mesh is the same it's a copy of the same mesh we've just reapplied but look at the detail that you can get on the models here if we get in here right some really really good details so and this is just the defaults in fact I'm just gonna apply the defaults I'm not gonna change anything but if we flip back and forth so if I shut that off and I shut this one I mean, there's no comparison at all. I mean, even if I get to the shoe here, you can see that there's a limited amount of details that we have here. And uh, if I turn on the other one, you can see all of a sudden all of those details pop with the photographs. So this pretty much is the idea here. And of course, I'm still new at this. I'm still learning about the software and when it can uh, benefit you or when it fails. But I think you can see there are these two features are super helpful. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to process that high definition scan, this one here with the fast fusion. So let me shut that off and bring this one on. And I just want to see, well, not so much how long it's going to take, but I want to see what the final result looks like when we actually do that using the tools and the fast fusion because right now if I look at it go to the wireframe really really dense and I can see there's a number of overlapping uh, meshes here so we want to refine that down minimize the amount of data that we have here and I just want to see what the details look like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video I'm going to let this process it might have to sit overnight i'm not sure but uh, then i'm going to come back and i'll look at the final results and that'll be the end of the video okay so it's actually the next day now and i let this cook overnight but i'd like everyone to have a look here at the quality of these little fine features that are here and this was using the 36 times uh, reconstruction for the hd scans and i think it looks pretty good um, definitely a very cool feature so that does it for this episode of Click 3D. We looked at Artex Studio 16 and two features. One is the photo texturing, which is kind of like a photogrammetry where you can get high resolution textures on a model. And the second one is this HD mode, which allows you to get really, really fine details out of an instrument that normally couldn't achieve this level of detail. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and we'll see you next time on Click 3D. Bye-bye.